Hi guys, this is Tracy with Inside Pool Magazine. They call me the diva. As you guys know, I've been running a two or three week uh, film about kids. All these kids are playing like adults and uh, it's amazing to see so many of these young interested and eager children go for the gold you know they're going for their dreams and i'm here to support those dreams we have a young gun with a fargo of 520 ladies and gentlemen it doesn't get any better than this his name is noah i'm gonna run his promo video and then we're gonna have a chat with his dad this is noah guys Hello, how are you? Could you guys please tell me what your last name is? The diva's having a hard time articulating it correctly. <laughs> uh, Majerski. And you must be Noah. Yeah. And dad in the background, I believe Ryan. his name is Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. Noah, how did you get in the pool? Um, uh, so my mom... Uh, she was getting her tattoo finished on her shoulder. Awesome, and I've got one too. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, um, my dad and my little brother and I and my dad's friend, we we were just walking around, and I think we were going to like this little bar, and this was like, uh, what, five years ago? So I was about eight. And uh, we walked in and Griffin and I were like bored. So we were just running around until we were about to leave. And I wanted to try to play pool since there was a pool table there. And um, so my dad let him, my dad let me use his stick. And um, I knew that we had a table at the house and I just started playing ever since. Oh my goodness. Ryan, <laughs> did you notice something special about little Noah? that you knew was different than the other kids? Well, one of the first things I did when, you know, I wasn't going to force it on him whatsoever because I've, I've played pool most of my life. Right. My dad, um, you know, I started kind of, my dad really wasn't a pool player, but he was, he was somebody that could still shoot halfway decent for somebody who didn't play pool. It was kind of like a natural five, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, there I was 13, 14, he was taking me to the bars and he'd slide me a whole bunch of quarters and off I'd play, you know, and that's how it started for me. So with him, it was more about like, he started hitting balls and I started noticing, um, you know, just some things. He had a little bit of natural talent and it finally came to the discussion. I says, well, do you want to play pool or do you want to learn how to play pool? And he said, I want to learn. And I said, okay, we're going to stop right here and we're going to just cross off everything that you think you know now. We're going to start from the basis. And that was really how it started for him was you know started off with stance and stroke and where to put his eyes at how to you know read ang you know try to get where he can see angles and stuff like that so that's really kind of how it started out and even to this day you know i work with him there's several other people that work with him that's had their hands on him i guess you'd say through this whole time um d atkins is one that's really had a lot big part in him i've heard um, that man's name thrown around a couple of times out of the midwest right. um, i ran into him briefly at derby city but he was right on the table when somebody's like you need to interview him and he turns around and looks at me and i was like i'm coming for you mm -hmm. <laughs> i hear some fantastic things um about mr atkins so hopefully one of these days i'll get the opportunity to sit down and speak to him um uh, have you you mentioned that you played for several years yourself? Do you see um, any of that fire maybe from your dad and your son? Well, I mean, so we try to keep it grounded. I try, you know, I'm I don't where I'm at. You know, we could you could sit there and throw Fargo ratings around or whatever. Right. It all depends on who you're playing, where you're playing. That you could read in that anyway. Um, I've played long enough to 
you know, I try to tell him all the goods and the bads. I'm very up forth with, you know, front uh, up forth with him about what he's going to see, the types of people he's going to meet, the, the sort of street smarts, you know. Right. Um, and he's, you know, he's a sponge. He, he sucks it all in and he's got a good personality. And most people um, tend to get along with him for the most part. You know, he, he I can leave him alone in a pool hall by himself. And it's happened with, you know, somebody I trust. And he's right. he could be there all night playing and not have to be, there's never a complaint, you know. Right. I have a few of those when I head over to Mississippi <laughs> in particular. I have a couple of those juniors. Their parents will come in. They'll be like, I'm going to run to the store. And I was like, your kids are fine here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you have all these babysitters because we all know each other. And um, that's the kind of community that helps um, cultivate you know, the, the pool in, in these children. So I'm glad that he has a fantastic role model. Um, Noah, who do you uh, credit your, well, who is your support system besides, I mean, I, obviously your dad and your mom, do you have anyone else that helps you in that, in that vicinity? That's a good support system for you? Um, well, not only them, but D. Adkins has also been by my side too. A couple of tournaments that I would go through, um, he'd always be there. Uh, he'd tell me what I would be doing wrong, and they would just get fixed from there. When did you turn? How old are you right now? I'm right 12. Now, 12. 12. When did you turn 12? December 7th. So he just recently got that Fargo of 520. Is that correct? Well, no, he's actually – well, we just started a league uh, at a local place by us that actually just used the Fargo. Oh, so, okay. You know, so I mean, it, we I think we played the last two seasons, so he was hovering right around from a five. I think he was as high as a five twenty seven, and as a like as low as a five nineteen. You know how that goes. You right it goes up. They'll down, fluctuate so. several points yeah. here and there, depending yeah. on you know if it's a Fargo rated type of event or not. Very nice, very nice. And uh, where is your hometown right now, Noah? Icebreakers. Uh, your hometown. Your hometown? Braceville. Oh, Braceville. Okay, and that's in Ohio? We're in Ohio. Well, Ohio's being represented by a fantastic junior. I'm hearing a lot coming out of some of these people coming out of Ohio talking about you. So <laughs> they're saying very nice things about you, sir. And uh, your home pool room again, you were about to tell me. Icebreakers. Icebreakers. All right. We we thank Icebreakers for allowing you to come in there and do what you do and doing what you love. And we support any venue that supports the juniors. So you let them know the diva is watching for sure. And uh, what school do you go to, Noah? Um, I uh, used to go to La Brea until um, one of the teachers said something that my parents did not agree. And so they pulled me out of school and we were just been homeschooled ever since. Well, sometimes that's the best in a world that's a little bit nuts right now. We have to do what we have to do for our kids. And until you guys are able to make a decision for yourselves, that's not going to be detrimental to your future. Then that's our job. So yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't even about pool or anything. We just, yeah, I'm not trying to get it. You know, it was just, it was, a right. thing that was sold and that was just a decision we made. And it's been a great decision there. His, his, per, his, uh, uh, the mannerisms, even his little brother, they're, they're just the stress isn't there anymore. Right. So. I remember when um, COVID first started and then my niece, it's affected my niece and my nephew a whole lot more than it did my, my children because my children are much older. But um, my young, my nephew, he, he really didn't really want to go back to school, the whole mass thing. And then there's so many rules and it made them extremely nervous children. So, you know, my sister did the same thing. She pulled the kids out because it just, it wasn't, it wasn't school anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. it, it was something completely different. So until the schools figure out what's going on. I have a question for you from one of our, uh, one of the sponsors I was mentioning. Learn Billiard says, who is your favorite pool player that you look up to, Noah? Um, I like Shane, Shane Van Boning. 
Shane's a fantastic man. Um, yeah. I have a tiny little story about Mr. Van Boning. I met him back in 2008 at Derby City Classic. And someone had knocked my drink all over me. And he helped me pick up the ice off the floor and bought me another drink. So, you know, for a pool player, that's pretty sporty, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, let's see. We have some more questions. So you said you started around eight years old and dad agreed with that. Does that sound like a fair a, a fair adjustment yeah, maybe eight, seven, seven, eight, seven, oh, seven, even eight, earlier eight, eight. so you've always had a table in the house for the most part yeah and we're actually upgrading i have a nine footer as well we just took a pole out of the basement uh put a whole steel i-beam in so the bar table's coming out and there'll be a nine footer in that's i figure if he is going to try to move forward he needs to be on the nine footer so that's I where agree. he's going next I know um, when I first started playing pool, I started on an eight foot table. So something in the middle. And that seemed to be OK with me. The the nine footer just I don't know, maybe it was just too much space. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm pretty much a bar box diva. I can shoot on a nine foot table, but I've been on those bar boxes most of my life. Let's see here. Noah. I have some other questions for you. What has been your biggest accomplishment uh, tournament wise to date? Your mom sent me a, a an impressive uh, rap sheet on you. <laughs> uh, probably, definitely Vegas. Um, not only flying, that was my first time ever flying. Awesome. Um, and it was just uh, really important to me just to be able to go out there and play pool with other juniors. Um, so that's... It was quite an experience, I'm sure, wasn't it? Yes. Fantastic. I've never been to Vegas myself, but a little bird tells me I'm going to be out there before long. <laughs> I hope they're ready for my southern accent. Let's see. What has been your biggest lesson to date? Um, just... That's a hard question. Yeah. It's a hard question because, I mean, you're sitting here thinking, you know, hmm, should I say this? Should I say that? Sometimes just being honest and the first thing that comes to mind is probably your best answer. Just learn, learn the fundamentals of pool first before you're going to make the jump to being good. Right. See, you nailed it. <laughs> Good answer. And an honest one, too. And an honest one. The one thing I love about the kids is they're very, very honest. And they'll also tell you if the outfit looks bad on you. My niece does, anyway. <laughs> After high school, do you plan on uh, extending or furthering your education, or do you plan on maybe making pool your profession, Noah? Probably pool my profession. And do you have a fallback? Yeah. And I what would that be? I would want. I would like to be an electrician. For Boy, there's plenty of need of that right now. I need something rewired, so I'll make sure I look you up once you get that, because it'll probably still be broken by the. <laughs> Dad, uh, how do you think he's he's faring? You said his grades look much better since you guys decided to bring them home. Has his grades been affected by his tournament play at all? Well, to back up for a second, his grades weren't suffering in school. It was more right. of a, you know, again, it was more of just an ideology, an ideology that we didn't Absolutely. agree with. So uh, we, we just decided here we're going to do this, you know. Um, Were they affected before at all? Not, not, not by going to a, a public school. No, right. um, I would say the only benefit was is, you know, definitely now that they're homeschooled uh, with a family that we know, and they do go to a actual school once a week. Um, um, they, they're, like I said, the stress level is not there. There's not that bad kid in class or right. the or or the extra, you know, noise because you have so many kids. 
I just noticed when they come home, they're not um, wired from the stress of the day. It's a lot more relaxing um, for, for all of us. There's no fighting about homework. There's no right. fighting about going to school. It just overall for us personally, it was a good decision. It sounds like um, it's working out for you. And for a child that is basically going to be on the road trying to hit some of these bigger tournaments. I mean, with his Fargo rating, he could go far in some of these, especially like the JIC and those type of events. Um, it makes sense because at least you know his homework will be done and everything will be in line. So I think that does make it a little easier on the child as well. That's a little and, less stressful for them. And, and so I'm in the trades, you know, and, and we have discussions about this. I think any parent would have with their kid. Uh, is to say, you know, there's all types of smarts. Mm -hmm. You can be a doctor and be stupid. You can be a plumber and be smart. You know, like it just depends on, you know, there is, there's all kinds of ways that people are intelligent and you don't have right. to be intelligent in every single thing because it's an almost impossible. Right. So we talk about that, you know, you know, being I'm in the trades and he wants to be an electrician. I say, Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You can make absolutely a nothing. You can make a very Absolutely good living nothing. being an electrician, you know. I run a dry cleaning business for, you know, it's not even my business. And um, I get I get to talk to people all day, and that's pretty much what I do. And, you know, everyone needs something else that they do besides the one thing that they love. I believe the, the quote was, um, your passion isn't always meant to be your career but your career can also be your passion. So it just depends on what you're looking at. So there's nothing wrong with being an electrician. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. I have a brother that's a plumber and he's really good at it. I'm like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> he's like, well, I couldn't be on a podcast every day either. And I was like, right. well, to each their own. <laughs> Correct. Yep. Absolutely. Learn Billiards wants to know what's in your case, Noah. Um, I play with a, oh, well, I used to play with a, um, David a David Brainer, um, until I was at, um, a tournament in Buckeye Billiards and this guy, his name is Aaron Hamblin. Um, he gave me this Predator Panthera with a carbon fiber. And ever since I have used that. So you like and, the carbon fiber shaft? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what else have you got in there? You got a break cue in there. Um, Jacobi I have a, I have a blackout. Jacoby Black. Uh, Jacoby Black. Um, and I have a distract jump cue. Do you wear a glove? Yeah. When you play, you do. Yes. What brand do you have? Predator. And do you have any special chalk that you use? I think Learn Billiards is curious about that chalk, and I'll tell you why. I believe it's blue diamond. But it's uh, no, it's well. Usually we have ma master the blue masters here. Right, right, right. Okay. Like blue diamond. So uh, let's see here. What kind of case do you have? He just got a new case. I don't know. We were at the last tournament, and it's he likes orange. So oh, he, okay. Well, he likes to be seen. That's pretty smart. He, he sucked me into a new case. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who makes it. It's one of those ones you can put on. You wear like a backpack almost. Oh, those are actually more convenient, especially when you're walking through, um, when you're walking through those big tournaments, right. because you know, it gets heavy on one side. Well, that's nice. That's a nice case. It almost looks like a John Barton. It almost looks like a JV case. Not quite sure, but that's pretty. That's nice. Okay, well, let's ask some more questions. Do you currently have a practice regime, Noah, that you do before you go and play in a tournament? No, it's all on what uh, my dad says. Depending on what game we're playing in the JSC, he tells me to, if it's nine ball, I'll just do six, seven, eight, nine, and try to run off from there for ball in hand because it's really important. Okay. Um, it's really whatever he says. So you've got you you pretty much know your kid and you know his strengths and his weaknesses. Do you play on that when you're helping him before these tournaments, Dad? Well, we play we play we try to play me and him all the games. You know, he mm -hmm. doesn't just play eight ball, nine ball. We've played right. straight pool, one pocket, we were gonna seven, ask. <laughs> seven ball. Uh, we've played that bowyards together. Um, you know, so I think that any game brings something to the table that will help you 
get better as well as with other games, you know, straight pull of one pocket can help your nine ball game, you know? Mm-hmm. So he, what I, I try, what I try to do before a tournament, I'll have him do the five, six, seven, eight, nine, or the six, seven, eight, nine, and give him the ball in hand because what I want him to do is build confidence, run those four or five balls, but run them perfectly. Right. I don't want him to break and then miss the first two or three balls and have him feel like I'm shooting bad going into a tournament. So I'm sort of just trying to build that confidence, you know, just where it hits a ball, you're still going through the motions, but you're not struggling because you get bad lies off the break or something. I get right. give yourself a ball in hand and learn just to play that pinpoint position for four or five balls. Keep you know? the confidence in play uh, as long yeah. as possible. Because, I mean, it's all a mental game. I was about to ask, uh, do you notice any pressures coming from these bigger tournaments, like um, these larger tournaments like the uh, Juniors International Championships? Do you see any, like, personality change in him when he's on a long grind? Because some of these are very long tournaments. Have you noticed any mental fatigue? Um, the, the mental stuff was when it really showed its head was when he was young. Right. You know, obviously, you know, he had to get it, get used to playing under pressure, the ups and the downs, learning that, you know, losing is okay. None of your losses now are going to ultimately affect what happens when you're 17, 18, 19, 20, you're learning. Um, I mean, look how many times Shane Van Boning went for that trophy. He just finally got it, and he's in his 30s. You know, it takes time sometimes. And that was the biggest thing is just the younger, you know, the first two years was, and I think with any kids, you know, you see them as they grow up, you know, they just start to be able to handle more. And now, um, you know, really there's not much there, which is what I wanted. I says, I, you know, and I'm sure Dee even told me to tell him, but it just in conversation, you know, I don't want to know if you make or miss a ball or if you just broke a rain or rack. I want sort of almost like no emotion. You know what I'm saying? Like if you win the world championship, yeah, you can jump on the table. But up until that point, like I don't, I just, you try to get them to understand that it's, you know, like D says, questions and answers. What did you do wrong? And if, if you don't learn from it, then you're not moving forward. So, you right. know, we try to go, we try to keep that frame of mind about everything. Do you feel like you're handling the the pressures of these tournaments quite well? I mean, you are only 12 years old. I think I am. I think Dad feels pretty confident in you as well. I can tell on the look on his face how proud he is of you. So I think you're doing – I think you're going on the right track. And you don't seem too bothered about some of this stuff. And I, I looked at a couple of those photographs, and I look forward to seeing you play more as well. Let's see. We do have some more questions for you. What is one tournament you would like to attend and why? I would like to attend the Derby City. Um, not most kids answers are probably like the Moscone Cup, but Derby mm-hmm. City gets you prepared for Moscone Cup. Uh, there's nine ball, nine ball banks, and uh, one pocket. So a lot of those get you prepared for the Moscone Cup. It gets you right in there, and those Moscone Cup points are pretty big right now. And it started over there with that tournament. I actually, I think it started before that tournament. I'm not quite sure, but I know the uh, the Moscone Cup points are connected to Derby City at least this year. So it's been um, it's been fascinating to watch these guys climb that hill. And you're right up there, kiddo, and you're only 12. <laughs> There's a lot of people that can't do what you do right now. <laughs> Let's see. How many hours do you think you spend a week practicing, Noah? Well, he's so he's he's into baseball. It oh, so you're a busy guy. How yeah. many do you have other hobbies besides playing pool, Noah? I should have asked that one first. Not really. Uh, I'll play. I'll play basketball here and there. Um, okay. I done wrestling for a bit. Nice. Um, Baseball. Yeah. And then we we sit on property, so both my boys they hunt, they fish. They're busy. They, yeah, awesome. they, we've got all the property we'd ever you know we want. So they're they're growing up like boys. They get to you know ride quad, shoot guns, fish, do whatever they want. You know, so it's. I grew up have, that way. <laughs> they have a good time. I had a here. fantastic childhood. I mean, I did. I grew up that way. I was surrounded by land and adventures and learning how to uh 
learning how to take care of yourself out there, you know, and it was fun for me. So, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic life to live out on, on a bunch of land and have freedom, yeah. you know, to exactly. find yourself, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. So you hunt and fish as well? Yep. Have you ever shot a deer, Noah? No. No, he had some opportunities. It just didn't happen. Just out of the grass. My dad does, uh, he bow hunts and you know, that was, and that's not my thing. I, I've never been able to kill anything in my life. But, I, you know, I don't mind cooking it. I will cook it. So, you know, I guess to each their own. Well, good going, buddy. At least we know that you're not going hungry if something happens to the... <laughs> <laughs> if something happens and we go into a major recession, we know that Noah's not going hungry. He knows how to <laughs> hunt for food. He should, he should most of it. <laughs> Well, he, Let's you know, see. He, he's, we had, he had a big pheasant. Uh, he wanted to go on a pheasant hunt for his birthday. And, uh, and both the boys, like he's killed a couple of squirrel. My younger son shot his first duck this past year. So that's, a, for me, it's the biggest struggle is being able to get both of them in the woods and try to make it successful hunting for both of them. It's a, it's hard as a dad. <laughs> right. How old you know, is the other one? Eight, eight and a half. Okay. So it's fighting time if they get bored. <laughs> They're pretty good. They're still brothers. They love each other, but they love to, they Mine love to beat too. each other. I mean, they're like four years apart when they were younger. It was always the older one picking on the younger one. You know, why are you touching me? Why are you looking at me? Kind of thing. You know, <laughs> I'm like, please go outside and play. <laughs> awesome. Do you feel, Noah, that the junior players have the support they need from people like myself, like the media, tournament directors, uh, venues? Do you feel like we're doing what we can for you guys, or do you think we could do more? Uh, for the most part, yeah. We've had a couple uh, people like disagree with a couple of things. Like, well, uh, we want you. We want you to express how you feel because this is really about you and your future. You know, your dad, myself, your mom. You know, we've lived. Uh, we've lived our life, and um, we try to take care of our children. So, you know, this is your soapbox, sir. If you have something to say, then you say it. Nobody's going to hold it against you because I'm backing you guys 100. percent We do need more venues. So, so, so he's not quite sure what to say. So the question was, do you feel that the juniors get enough? Yes. Do uh, you feel like the juniors are getting the exposure that they need and the support? Because um, a lot of the parents are saying yes and no. Dad, do you feel like they're getting the support they need? Or are you on I, the I yes? I think it no comes and with? goes. Um, I think pool in general is one of those. It's a great game. We right. all know this. It's a great game, but you don't, even at the pro level, I mean, think about it when you see a golf tournament, you know, you have Wells Fargo putting up that golf tournament. Well, you don't have Wells Fargo putting up a nine ball tournament. You know, it's right. it seems like sometimes the only sponsorship or or people that are bringing money to the game that are that are tied into the game. There's no outside money like, say, golf has, you know, the banks or right. whatever. You know, I think that's what pool is lacking. And I, I'm sure there's other people out there that feel the same way that is how do you bring in outside interest and outside money to grow the sport? You know, we're doing it right now. We're starting yeah. with the kids because we have to get the sponsors to realize that it's not a game. This is a sport. If you can call cornhole right. a sport, right. then I refuse to acknowledge it as a sport until they acknowledge billiards as a sport, because it is. And this is how we do that. We start with the kids. Because the kids are the ones that will be the future of our billiard industry. And they need to realize that these kids see this as a sport. Um, like I was talking with the other parents. I think that we need to find some way to put pool tables in the schools. Once we do that, then the kids can compete against each other. And in the schools, just like you would at a swim meet or anything else. And I think some of these kids would love to do that. You know, and I think, you know, we need to, we've got to start somewhere. So I agree with you. Do you know, I think that we're doing the best that we can for you guys, or do you think we could do more? You're doing, you're doing fine. Okay. All right. 
I do have another comment from Learn Billiards. Mako Tips would be proud to sponsor Noah if he's interested. Dad, I will hook you up with this gentleman a little later on after the podcast. Okay. Thank you so much, Learn Billiards. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. And in 10 years, if we could fast forward 10 years, Noah, where would you like to be in the tournament world? Where would you be in 10 years? The Derby City again. Derby City Classic. Dad, you're going to have to trek on over there. That kid's going to sweep every one of those events. <laughs> We've had that discussion about tournaments, you know. I, I kind of like Derby City because of what it is. It's a, To me, it's a little more classic. Cla I don't know. I don't want to say classy, but, you know, you have the three events. Mm -hmm. You know, it's – and then to win two of the three events is that – the, the, the prestige that comes along with right. winning two of the events, you know, it's almost like your name sort of gets etched in a different way. I, it's something about yeah. that chandelier that's hanging in the yeah. middle of the place with all of those pool tables. And then you have those banners with everybody's picture and their names on it since it began, except for 2020 uh, when it was shut down, it has a blank space there. So, um, it is, I believe, the prestige of just winning it, not to mention that big fat check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but having your name in lights, I agree. It's it's better than a trophy. I mean, it's up there forever. It's almost like being on the winning football team every year. <laughs> but Derby City Classic, um, I'm, I hope to see you there. Have you thought about Super Billiards Expo? We, yeah, we, we just, just went, went to the there. one in Pennsylvania. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you do up there? I took third. Well, look at there. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? He took third. <laughs> so it's one of those, I've been there, I've done that, next. <laughs> I've never been to a Super Billiard Expo. It's my first time. It was your first time? Well, you did really well for your first time, so I'm assuming next year you're planning on snapping that one off, huh? <laughs> Look out, Savannah. He's coming for you. Okay. What advice would you give newcomers to the game of billiards? It would be, again, like learn the fundamentals. And then once you, once you have those down, you can start competing um, into, like, junior uh, tournaments. Um and you, you can't be afraid to get out into the big tournaments every once in a while. I'm not saying go all the time, but just to get out there in the big tournaments will get you a lot of experience. Dad, does he have any problems at some of these adult tournaments with, um, with the adults? Um, having issues with him being his age coming in there? Well, and so, it is like everything else, you have good and bad. Um, we... We, we did have a bad experience at an adult tournament. It was a team event with an all-junior team. Um, it was a pretty bad experience, and there were some pretty mean things said. Uh, that being said, I've had some fabulous tournaments where right. I've, got, I've got adults crying because he lost in the finals of adult tournament. You know, like right. we got girls hugging him and crying because they're upset because he almost made it. You know, so right. we've had we've 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 had both sides of the coin there. Really, it's you kind of learn that you, you take it as it comes, you know? Right. You kind of just brush those things off. Haters are always going to hate. You play your game and you do it for you. You don't do it for anybody else but you. Because it doesn't really matter what everybody else says because everyone has an opinion. That's just pretty much how it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Great, great answer, Dad. Great answer. I can tell he gets a lot of his humbleness from you. So you and your wife are doing a fantastic job mm -hmm. with these kids. They're, they're amazing. I'll have to meet the other little kid you got running around there. <laughs> right. He, he, he keeps saying he's trying to get his little brother to play in pool. We don't, we don't force it. Uh, but no, it right. does say all the time. He goes, if I, he goes, I would love to be able to walk in to the Moscone cup knowing my brother was my partner, you know, like he, he, he'd like that, but we don't force it on Griffin. You know, he, he right. makes his own decisions when it comes to that. Each one, each child, uh, I mean, being a parent, each one of our children is different, mm -hmm. uniquely different. Um, sometimes they have the this common interests, but their interests 
are only common for that short second. And then we realize, wow, they're individual people. They're not mm -hmm. a package deal. And um, I never forced my kids to do, to do one thing with the other one. I never did that either. I let them have their own identity. And I think that's important, especially in billiards, because we have a tendency to, to group children together. You know, this group of kids is this and this group of kids is this. And each one of them has their own strengths. And uh, that's another reason why I like doing this, because each one of these kids is special in their own way. So fantastic answer. I love it. Love it. Let's see here. I think we've answered most of these. So how about we let Noah show off a little bit? Shall we, Dad? <laughs> I'll let him decide what he wants We're to do. turn the screen there dad's going to turn the screen around a little bit and let noah show off a little bit of his billiard skills and we appreciate uh them taking their time up with this crazy blonde coming into their home and uh, disrupting their their quiet time noah if you could just um either throw the balls up there or just pick a shot that one your favorite shot and then one that's a little more difficult for you. How is he at jumping balls, Dad? Actually, he's phenomenal at jumping balls. He's got them little rubber arms. Like he just bang and they <laughs> they, they go. Well, let's see one of those jump shots. Can you do that for us, Noah? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Noah. Out of Ohio, he is representing the state of Ohio, and they could not be more proud of this 12-year-old with a 520 Fargo. And he's already gotten a sponsor from tonight. So congratulations to Noah and Mako Tips. Thank you so much, guys. So the Dave is going to be quiet and let this kid show, show us his stuff. Set it back up. Pretty good. Very nice. Do you have a favorite shot that you like doing, Noah? Do you have a particular shot that's just your specialty that you just love to shoot? I, no, not really. Not really. Dad, he seems pretty comfortable with that jump cue, like you yes, said. He, he, like I said, he can jump. He's, <laughs> he's a better jumper than I am. How is he at Banks? Actually, he likes to play nine ball Banks. He he's, um, I've actually seen him play nine ball Banks with adults, and and. He can compete. He does have a natural eye for banks. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, have you guys traveled good... down to Meridian, Mississippi yet? Would you, would you say? Have you guys traveled down to Meridian, Mississippi yet? No, we haven't. Okay. They run a, uh, they run two actual events. Their Calcuttas are up into the hundreds of hundred thousand range. And anybody can enter. And they give you a Fargo when you uh, uh, a handicap when you get there, but mm -hmm. they usually look into your Fargo rating. He would be probably around a six or a seven, probably a six. But um, it's an interesting little tournament, and they just recently are thinking about going smoke free. Also, Campbellsville, Kentucky is holding a split bracket tournament as well. So if you're looking into any of that, Dad, you can play in these with him. So if you guys are interested, just let me know and I'll send you that information. Yeah, and we, we look at any tournaments. We uh, try to go where we can. Obviously, me and her work. Right. Know, so it's, it's you know, we we have a schedule. I'm My wife is the secretary of the relationship. I'm Whatever, whatever she puts on the schedule, that's I just. I, okay. I hear you. Somebody's <laughs> you know got to do all of it. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll take him anywhere, uh, and it turns into most of the time it turns into a more like a vacation. You know, we try right. to make uh, his tournaments like you know whatever a three or four day vacation. You know, right? What well, usually that's what my vacations are: half work, half vacation. <laughs> we uh, we last year we actually went to South Carolina to go see uh, Hallie's friend, 
And we, uh, matter of fact, on that tournament, we it was uh, called Tailgaters, and there was actually a, a nine ball tournament that night that let him come in, and he took second or third on that, right? So it was an all adult tournament, and we kind of snuck him in there, and he ended up taking third. So fantastic! That's right. awesome. Also, Kenny's Barn Grill in um, Barnhart, Missouri. They usually put on some really nice uh, doubles tournaments and tournaments for the kids as well. So if you're ever in the St. Louis area, that's another great place to go. Mm -hmm. She's watching, Regan. I'm watching you, kiddo. <laughs> So what is Noah's next tournament, Dad? Do you guys have a schedule up yet? We're going We're going to, I think it's the, called Borderline Billiards in Tennessee. So you are going to Bristol. Fantastic. Yeah, Janet Atwell's there. place um, is awesome. One of the, I, I don't have her name. She had reached out to us over Facebook, asked if we were coming. And at the time, I don't even know if I'd even heard of it. And, and I said, well, yeah, sure, we'll go. So she was looking to put kids on the list. And uh, obviously, I think the way she, the way her wording was that she had already researched Noah or f heard about him and wanted right. to know if he would come down. So, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. So we. Um, He'll have a fantastic time. Janet's place is awesome. She's such a phenomenal lady. Uh, you guys will have a, a wonderful time there. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep you guys too late. I want to say thank you so much for you guys showing up tonight and help and uh, giving a diva a little pool lesson there, kiddo. I really enjoyed um, watching you shoot. <laughs> he like, he like to, he'd like to thank a few people and then that's... Uh, I'm going to let you do that. If you have okay. any sponsors or you have any grandparents or uncles, cousins, friends that you need to give a huge shout out to, uh, go right ahead. I think Carlos Sanchez, uh, he's my one clothing sponsor. What shot? Um, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, I'm like another son to him. He just treats him great. Yeah, he just. He's a fantastic man. Love him. He's a Love great him. guy. Then uh, I also give a thanks to uh, Mike Cease. He pays sometimes for my entry fees in tournaments. Awesome. Um, and again, Aaron, uh, Aaron Hamblin for the Q. Uh, he's just like my Q sponsor for now. Um, so not so many yeah. times you get a person that has enough interest in your in your in your son or, or kid to hand them uh, a predator panthera and just and say you know I've been following him for a while I'd like uh, you know let him shoot with it you know so that was a uh, had some That's meaningful really discussions we had some meaningful discussions with him and you know Noah loves his cue you know so. Well, thank you guys so much. And thank you guys, those sponsors. These kids need sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. They need, you know, the parents. We're working ourselves and we're trying to get our kids to these events. But we also have other things that we have to pay for, too, especially if you have more than one child. So if there are any sponsors out there looking for a fantastic kid to sponsor, here's one right here. I have a slew of them. So huge shout out to Carlos Sanchez with Clutch Shot Apparel. We love you, Carlos. He's I'm a great still guy. waiting on my sweatshirt. I'll come and steal it from you when I find you, sir. He walks in and he grabs Noah like he's part. He just come on, Noah. He, he he takes him. You know, he's a great he's guy. He's an awesome man. Every yeah. time I see him, he always has the best smile on his face and he's always in a good mood. You couldn't ask for a better person than Carlos Sanchez. He's an awesome man. And Mr. Cease, my goodness, I didn't know you had your fingers in the and the juniors events, but I'll be coming talking to you, Mr. Mike. <laughs> 
So anyway, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your night and I appreciate it. And like I said, dad, if you got a, uh, about five minutes, I'm going to pull you into a chat room with, um, with um, Mako Tips, uh, Mako Tips owner, and he wants mm -hmm. to chat with you just a few minutes about your uh, gunslinger over here. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pull these guys out, let them take uh, a little break while I do my closing. I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. That was Mr. Noah. Let me tell you something, guys. When you get the opportunity to be around these junior players and the smiles on their faces and the eagerness and that hunger that they have to play pool, it's almost a, a breath of fresh air because we used to be that age at one time and we had these glorious, grandest dreams of doing something bigger than what we are so if there are sponsors out there that look that are looking for any of these kids just contact me and i can put you in touch with their parents they would appreciate any help that they can get to get these kids to these events also uh, if any tournament directors out there that are looking to put on a fantastic event we had a um a brainstorm last night of a moscone cup for kids you know, if there's a tournament director out there and there's a venue and there's somebody that wants to tackle this on, we have people that are willing to donate some cash money. So you guys hit me up. You know, we need a Moscone Cup for these kids, at least something similar to it. We can take, you know, 10 of the best kids and put them together and we can make something out of it. And I think it would be a, a great thing to stream and something to watch. Anyway. From the diva, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you guys for watching and supporting my my new adventure, which is uh, spotlighting some of the best kids around the nation. And hopefully it'll get around the world eventually. Anyway, um, I'm going to plug my sponsors right quick. Enterprise Car Rentals, if you guys are needing a fantastic ride when you're come flying into any airport or if you're just needing a ride for the weekend just to ride around in style, Enterprise Car Rentals. I have a link for you at the in the description box, so you guys will get a nifty discount. Also, Pure Breed Hustle. They are this month's and next month's sponsor for these kids. Remember, every view that these kids get on these at the end of the that at the end of the two months, they will get something amazing from this sponsor. So you guys make sure you're viewing so they can get those votes. Anyway, I'm going to head out of here and I'll see you guys tomorrow night with another junior. You guys have a great night. I'm going to run Noah's promo video one more time and tell you good night. See ya.